Hey folks, I want to believe you're doing great wherever you are. Welcome to the very second tutorial. The first tutorial was an introduction to Git and it was much of a theory. There wasn't any practical work done there, but in the very in this second tutorial, purely practical. And so if you never went through the first tutorial and you lack the um, understanding of how Git works and you need the introductory bit, please, I encourage you to watch that bit. I want to admit that that first tutorial the video itself wasn't so great because i happened to never have edited that video i'm still learning how to edit videos and so that one i just recorded and posted it wrong and so apologies there are a lot of sections within the video that were not uh, in order and so i hope going forward i'll be improving in terms of recording and, and editing my videos and it'll go, you're going to find them more interesting going into the future also before we begin our today's tutorial i just wish to encourage you to subscribe and like if you find my videos interesting and if you think my videos are good enough to help somebody please feel free to share with as many people as possible and so it's my pleasure to take you through the second tutorial on git basic command without further ado let's jump in git playground where all you're going to do is to play around with the commands i really encourage you to, to get to know the core concepts of git because once you can visualize the core concept then you can easily troubleshoot git so for today what you're going to go through is how to configure and initialize a repo how to begin and stop tracking files how to stage and commit changes how to set git to ignore files how to undo mistakes in case you make mistakes and then how to browse history of a project and lastly we look on to how to push and pull um, content from the git remote so let's get started with initializing the git so how to initialize git there are different ways you can initialize git one is to assuming that you've already installed git in your machine and you can tell whether it's installed or not by entering that the command git version and then two you wish to point it to the fact that along the way you might need help and then you enter here the command so maybe you, the command you want to look at now is get in it so we'll do that and we get the help a nice manual you can read through and get to understand what's going on i really encourage you to use this most of the time and so there, there are different ways you can write this command instead of, instead of doing it help you can as well do you can use manual man git and then the command in this case the command is in it this one should still be able to take us there and you can find other ways of getting help too all right so this folder is empty and i will create a repo and within that repo sorry sometimes i confuse between file and folder don't worry i think you'll be able to understand because that's what you're dealing with mostly here so within this folder we have nothing it's empty and i want to place a project within this folder so what i'll do is if i do git in it it's going to initialize to make this repo uh, a git repo and it will track anything every file that we add to this uh, folder but I want this folder to host different git projects. So for that case, I'm not going to initialize git in this folder. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to call git init and I'm going to give it a folder that it's supposed to initialize git within. So let's call it basics. And there it is, it's created the folder. So if I do ls, I see I have the git basics folder. So if I want to view the contents of, of that folder, I'll do I'll just do that and you can see we, we have some content in within. One thing I want you to notice if we cd into that folder um, and we try to list the content of the folder, we, we it won't list anything because the contents the when, when you do git in it, the initialized um when git is initialized, it is initialized enough in a subfolder called dot git which at any folder that has whose name starts with a dot that is a hidden folder so when you just list the contents of that folder without specify specifying that you want to see the hidden content then you won't be able to see that so for you to be able to see the hidden content then you have to do an la so that way we can see the dot git does exist and we can even see the contents of the dot git we can do uh, ls dot git um, right and you can see these are the contents we'll be looking into these contents in future when we'll be going into advanced topics of git and i promise to do a video on that but at the moment just bear with me with the what we have another way to initialize git we can create a folder then maybe let's say a uh, second folder we call it second project so we have this folder within you can see it there but this folder doesn't have git so how do you tell between a folder that has git initialized and the one that doesn't have git initialized so if we cd to the first one um, and we run any git command for instance git status 
it's a git command we see it runs successfully it tells us we are on branch master and we don't have any commits but this one won't be the case when we try to run this command in the second in the second folder so if we do git status in here we get an error it throws an error because git hasn't been initialized in this folder remember the fleet ran the git command and we gave it the folder name and it created the folder and it initialized git within it but in this case the second project we just created the folder but we don't have git initialized so it, in this case we initialize git by just doing git init without uh, proceeding it with the, the name of a folder so that way if we enter you see you can even see my terminal notifies me that yeah we've already created a git and it gives me the, the the default branch in which if you initialize git you'll always get the default branch which is master the rest of the branch you create you'll get into the branches and you'll get to know how they work and so that's how we initialize git and so we we'll get into the second section okay before getting to the second so there's the third the, the very last way to initialize git and that's by cloning so when you clone git is initialized by default so you don't need to run any git init command because git clone does uh, that for you and when you're cloning run the command git clone and then you enter the url here because you're pulling this file from a certain section we can have a file that is remote within our computer you can create a remote folder within our computer where we'll be pulling our changes and pushing our changes to but in most cases that's that, that's not what you'll be doing instead you'll be cloning a rip of github maybe uh, github is just a server for a git server we have different uh, server providers we have github we can have bitbucket and so on and so forth and most cases most people use github so we can clone a repo from there and start uh, making changes onto that repo and then later on push our changes and pull changes that other people have made so if we want to start that the very beginning you will have to clone that repo and so what we do i'll show you quickly what we do i might want to clone one repo in this case i want to, to clone a repo called algorithms so i click on that repo this is my account and when i click there you can say i can clone it now that i can clone it using um, two protocols i can choose one i can use https or i can use ssl in most cases the one that is by default is https because you don't need to configure anything you just copy the url and you do git clone you enter the url but if you use the ssh then you have to configure your your git repository uh, in this case my remote repository and my local machine i have to go and take you into that but that one seems to be one easy way because you don't have to enter your passwords and 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 email every other time you want to push content or pull content from github it makes work so easier but you have to configure your public key and so on and so forth but for now we'll just use the https that most people use at first so i've copied the url and what i'm going to do is clone and i'm going to paste the url there and voila there we have the repo initialized so we have this repo here if i list the content you can see i have the algorithms repository so if i cd into algorithms you can see everything has been initialized and every content i had in that repo remotely now exists locally on my machine so i can start making changes and later on push full changes in case i'm collaborating with other developers so that's how we initialize git and so suppose you want to start now tracking files you know and tracking files what are the commands you really need to know so the very first command you really need to have in your pocket is the, the git status command and what this command enables you to do is to check the status of your work see where you've modified any files or you've staged any files when we are handling the git introductory bit we say that we have three stages we have the working tree we have the staging area and we have the git directory now when on the working tree that's where you do your modifications and so on and so forth you have the git uh, tree structure there you can add files you can add folders you can make modifications and everything within that now when you do any changes within that um, within the working tree the git status command will be able to notify us that hey you have added some contents into these files or you have deleted this file you have created a new file and this command is very essential at the same time if we stage a file for commit you are preparing it for a commit that means you are staging it Git status will also tell us that you have staged these files so it's a very important command and it can help you to unstage and do quite a lot of things 
going forward. That's what Git status does. If so, if you run Git status or if you run Git status short, Git status gives you verbal detailed information. But when you don't want the detailed information, then you use Git status short or just Git status s. So we'll run both commands and be able to see what they do. Um, if you want to start now tracking files in real sense, the command or to untrack a file, the command we use of it, when you add a file, um, that means you are putting it onto the staging area and officially we are tracking that file. Otherwise, if a file is untracked, then um, or, or we can as well remove it and that means uh, from the staging area, that means we don't want to track that file. So we'll also use this command and we'll be able to see what it does. But before we go any further, when you're doing the git add, there are some files or folders you might not wish to add or to put onto the staging area, or literally you might not want to include them into your snapshot. So for that case, there is one important um, file you need to create, and that file is called uh, gitignore. So we'll have to create that file first before we proceed with any, any other. So um, it's called a, it's a hidden file, so it's a .gitignore. So, it's a very important file so any, any anything you want to exclude in your snapshot or in anything you don't want to stage for that case you include it in this file so i'll show you how to do it but you can read the documentation and get to know much more about how to uh, include the files to ignore and folders to ignore uh, but in this case i'll just because of time i'll take the shortest time possible to illustrate this so i'm using a uh, view my editor so uh i want to ignore build files maybe i'm writing a program in c and in c when we run building your c file when you're doing a mac there is the the compiler creates a file at the end of the day it's called dot out so i might want to include to and that's the file that you run actually the already compiled uh, result for you to be able to see what your program does so i might not want to include those files so i might say anything if in case i was writing a c program or just in case i have files that end with this extension i might say i want to exclude every file whatever name it is that's why i'm using an asterisk and every file that ends with the dot all files that fall within this category dot uh, any file that ends starts with the dot a or dot o so all those files will be ignored at the same time, I might want to exclude a very simple example, any file that, uh, any PDF file, or I might want to exclude any folder that is, maybe a folder that is called Mac. So, uh, so the folder, this folder with its contents will be ignored. So you can go through the documentation and see what that means. Also, there are other temporary files. You understand that the temporary files start with the tilde. So I might want to include any name, any temporary file. So that's how we ignore. So I'll save this. So so um. So all those files, when when I do uh, git add, it won't add. The, it won't stage those files in case they exist. So if I do git add, this command is used to add files that we intend to stage. For for that matter, let's do git status to check the status of our, our working tree. So you see, um, we are working on branch master, and this branch is up to date with origin, origin master, because uh, this branch is up to date with origin master because we cloned it from uh, the remote repo in GitHub. And this, this is the file we have uh, added, which is untracked. And we will not add this file for the reason that we are not going to commit this file to, we are not going to add this file and make it part of the snapshot because we don't need to do that all the content of this file mean that the files within we, we wish to retain them locally but you don't want to push them to the remote uh, remote uh, server so that's very important and there's a difference between this, this the git status message i want you to note this your branch is up to date with origin master and then i'll go into another git repo we have within like git basics actually we should be working with this one instead of that one so if i do if i run git status in here this one is empty so i'll create a git ignore here so if i run git status 
you can see I can make changes onto that. So we have added this file, but we don't have that the previous message of uh, it is up to date with the branch master or JS because this one is a local. This 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 uh, repo hasn't been linked remotely to it only exists locally. But later on, we can see how to link it remotely. But so this this the file this file is unstaged. That means we haven't we haven't staged it, preparing it ready for a commit. So we can create another file in here called uh, sample.txt or let's say uh, I want to create a file where we want to, to do a scripting for a ping script to ping some uh, to ping our network. So I'll call it uh, ping script. I can use touch or I can just use vim and open it direct away and I think that's a good thing. And for a start I just want to maybe uh, prepare this file for some stuff so i'll say uh, okay so I'll, I'll save this one i don't want a lot of stuff but i'll advance this script so when we do git status so we see we have created two files and we, we are not tracking any of these files yet. So we want to start tracking these files. So to and, and we don't want to track this file. So in our git ignore maybe we we leave it we, we touch that before so I'm not going to touch in that. So um I want to add I want to start tracking the ping script command and at the same time I also want to uh because I want to uh, include it into the snapshots I'll create in future. So what I'll do here, I'll do git add. And the, 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 when you run git status, it gives you even a hint of what to do. So you can see you have to do git, uh, git add and then the file to include it onto what will be committed. That means to stage it. So in this case, we're going to do git add ping, ping script. So if we do git status again, just to confirm, to see the status for our working tree. Now, we have this we have it shows us that we have a new file if this file existed before and we we had included it into the commit it, it what it could tell us is that this file has been modified but since it's never been committed it says that it's a new file called ping script so we've already staged it but maybe we might have staged it by mistake maybe we never wanted to include it suppose it was the git ignore that we never want to stage so to unstage it we just do git rm cached and then we give the name to unstage it so we can do that so we can do git rm i think there's a shortcut to this this one should work um okay actually it doesn't it's not, you have to write cached um, okay there's no shortcut to this so like quiet you know quiet can just do a queue. This one, this one, you have to write everything. Sorry. Okay. Okay. Uh, oh, okay. It's supposed to have two dashes. Sorry. Okay. So when you do git status again, you see we have unstaged it. It's not yet staged. That means it's being. It's not. Yet, it's not being tracked. So we'll 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 add it again. So when you do git add dot it adds everything within the working tree but we don't want to add everything within the working tree the current working folder so um what i want us to do if you, do, you also do git uh, add and then uh, follow it with the asterisk it will also add everything within within our folder if you want to add everything within within the working within the working tree from top to down including all folders and everything what you're going to do is uh, Think this is it it will add everything so but in this case yeah this one adds everything so if you do git status you see it is added everything including the git ignore and and the ping command but we don't want to add the git ignore so that is it so we'll do git uh, we'll remove the git ignore so you remember the command um, So there, there we have it. 
so guys that's how we add files and we check the status and that's how we also create the um, git ignore files and you understand what the git ignore does before you stage so there's a it appears there's a very special command we call git div so as the name suggests it's we it enables us to get the difference in terms of the changes we've made to the file so right now you can run this command the way it is and this at, at this point in time it won't work because we haven't staged anything because when you run it as, a t as it is it compares your content to what you it looks at the working tree at the uh, f uh, files you've modified and compares that file to the same same file that you staged so and sees whether there is any difference and then it will highlight the difference so right now when we run it there is nothing we get nothing but later on if we stage a file so for instance we have the ping script if we 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 have not yet committed this file but we want to make changes to this uh, to this file so i'll uh, i'll make changes to the script let's let me open it so maybe i'll start writing my uh, script and what i'll do So my my just one line here. Maybe I want to ping. Let's say um, the count should be one of the ping, and I want to ping Google.com. I'll use the domain name instead of the real IP address, and uh, I just want to do that for now. Now when I do git status you see uh, we state this file it's a new file at that point in time but right now it's no longer a new file it does exist within the system but now we are tracking it we are already tracking it and we have modified it so when we do git diff you can see right now it is running initially it, it failed it gave us an empty um, page but right now you can see it is it is run it, it is giving us some content and it's showing us the changes that we've made so uh it tells us that we we deleted this line we added this line and the difference here is just a dot remember i deleted a dot by mistake and then we added a line here and another line so this the whatever is in green these are the changes that we made so you can see it, it can tell us it can tell the difference of the whatever addition we've done or deletion and it what it simply does it compares the file that is on the working tree that has not been staged and it looks at the staging area to see whether we staged any file like that so if that file exists on the staging area it looks at the contents and it compares that versus that that we have at the working tree so that's what git diff does so and there's also another uh, git diff command um suppose you just want to see the the staged file so what we'll do is um a staged file uh, comp so we have git diff and it does the same thing now this command could run still if we um if if we just had the file a new file that had not yet been modified but staged for instance let's say let's say we create a file um okay we have a file called sample.txt So we have a, a file called sample.txt. I, I doubt whether that file has anything. It doesn't have anything. So I need to delete it. Now to, to delete a file, you, you can use gitrm, but this one only deletes a file or a folder that has been staged. In this case, sample.txt won't work because it is not yet been staged. You can see it is giving us an error. But in case we had staged this file, we could easily remove it by use of uh, gitrm uh, sample. But now that it's not staged, we are we'll just use the rm command. 
and this one will delete it successfully. Um, I want to give it some content. I want to create this file and give it some content. So let's say, um, say so I have created that file and that is the content. So if I do git status, that file exists but we did a mistake we just echoed we never gave it the file so <laughs> sorry okay right now it should be existing okay there it is so i want to stage this file and um so if i do git diff um it was staged we only get for one uh for, for for ping script but we we can't get it for the sample because it is it doesn't work for that so what what we want here is uh we want to stage it and see how it works um, so um, we'll do git add we want to add sample the text and we also want to we also want to add a ping all of them so if you do git status, so you can see you can add several files. So we've added these two files. And right now if we do git diff stage. Okay, so we did an excellent error here. It's supposed to be dash dash. Okay, so what you can see there are two files being uh, the, a reflection of two files there is the ping script and there is sample.txt so we can so git div uh, uh, stage only looks at the staged files okay so um and and in case we make any changes um so i'm going to so we looked at the div stage and we looked we made changes and it was able to show us which uh, which files we it was able to highlight the changes that we had so there's another one called git diff um, cached so it does nothing to git diff stage but what this does is um, the difference between the two git diff stage compares the uh, compares the stage content to the last commit and in case we don't have the last commit so it'll just run and it will give us the changes we've made but minus the last commit so we'll do a commit and then we'll be able to see um to see to see the difference between the two and then the git um we had the git git diff cached that one uh, it just looks at what you have uh, what you have staged so far like in this case so let's do a commit and then we can be able to uh, visualize what these commands do so we have staged wh what we have staged so far okay sorry it's very difficult to talk and to do so this we have staged these two files all of them are new files so what we intend to do is we intend to commit so we we'll do to commit those changes we just do git commit now so if we just do git commit it will fire up our and it will give us an editor so where we'll uh, where we'll append our our message because every commit has to go with the message and i insisted in the introductory bit i did insist that when you are doing the messaging ensure that your message is, is something that is appropriate it's brief and straight to the point so um so therefore let's uh, so we'll just do git commit and you can see it is firing up the Vim editor because this was my default uh, editor. Remember when you're installing, you could change this using the git config command. I'll show you in a brief moment. But here I want to say my message is uh, add. Maybe I've added a sample, add two files. in script and sample 
just for example that is but if you're working on a feature then you have to really explain what you're doing and you can see our commit has is successful so the commit comes with a message it tells you that uh, we are working on master uh, master branch and even this is the hash value of that commit because remember we said that each commit has got a hash value and then uh, we have added two files ping script and this 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 is the commit message we created and then uh, here we have some statistics which tells us that we have two files that have been we have changed two files and with the, within those two files it is counted the insertions or deletions but in this case we had uh, we we had eight insertions and no deletions and then uh, okay so right now if we do git diff cached we have nothing here because we don't have anything staged so because if we check there's nothing there's nothing that has been staged it is clean that's why git diff cache can't work and then if we do git diff uh, state there is nothing to but what if we make some changes to one of our scripts maybe let's say um, to sample.txt I add another line so I can say something like uh, sorry and then I append this one to sample. Okay, so if I want to view the contents of first uh, sample, so you see, uh, this is another line we added that successfully. So I can do git status. So we have this file that we have modified. So if we do git diff, um, So still there's nothing staged because it looks at what you've staged and and and, and what you have um, okay there's nothing on the staging area and that's why these commands are all, all of them are failing because we've not staged anything but if we do git add sample.txt so we have staged this file so if we do git diff let's start with git diff cached you can see um it's looking at the, the changes with the the files we have uh, we have staged and any additions we have done so it it's able to tell us that yes we added this line what about git div uh, stage it also looks at the uh, the committed the snapshot we created and then it compares it to the file we have staged and it gets that this is the change that we have um, we have added so it's important you do get the difference between git div cached and git div stayed so in brief git div cached what it does just looks at the um, at the files we have staged it looks at what we have staged and get, gets to see whether there's any difference um, and then git div stayed what it does it looks at it, it compares what we have staged and what and, and what we uh, currently uh, committed or created a snap so to, to look at the current snapshot and what we have staged so that's basically the difference between the two commands um and there's also git diff of course don't forget that and that one can't give us anything but you saw if we did uh, make any change modification on the file and then not st we, we fail to stage it and then we run it then it could easily it, is, it shows us what changes we have made and then this uh, git uh, diff tool this is a tool that uh, can easily enable you also to look at the differences and so on and so forth it is a GUI tool but in this case I'm not going to look at that but it's a good thing for you you have to install it and, and there are some um, there are some commands you have to pass in so like this is so we can see i haven't installed it i'm not use i'm not using the gui i'm only running in the terminal and some of these commands will not work so but if you're running windows and you have installed uh, div tool then 
it it will uh, it will be able to do some of these things so you see if if run in terminal only session they will fail some of these uh, some of these tools uh, listed here so it has got lots of tools that you can use to automate the git uh, diff to compare code and stuff so it's a good thing but i'm not going to touch on that right now because of time maybe we can have a separate video for that all right so um so we might also want to uh, remove uh, files from staging area. So let's say maybe we you want to, first of all, maybe we want to rename a file and that file has been uh, staged and before we create a snapshot. Now, I want to, this file uh, ping, it's it's not, it's supposed to be ping script and what we have is ping screen, which is wrong. I want it to read as ping script. So. I want to make changes into this file and I want to advance my script. So what I want to do is instead of having, uh, I'll create a variable here that holds hosts. Let's say hosts. Uh, maybe I'll say in the current folder, I'll create another file where I'll enter the piece and I'll call the IPs maybe in the current folder. So th this is our host. So um, I want to simply, what I want to do is uh, I want to iterate through the content of the host. So I'll say for, maybe let's say for, let's say for host. So shell script, guys. So the content, we, if I want to see the content, then we have to cut it. So in hosts. And so what you want to do, okay. Actually, ping, and I'm not going to ping this address, but what I'll ping is I'll ping the host, which is um, so I'll say ping host. So, and then I just want maybe the message say if uh, if the output equals uh, this, this is the will you see to see whether the, the it ran successfully or not. And then just to echo okay because that is a star zero is a okay status else to echo something like uh, let's say not okay and then we want to finish this so and then done so i want to believe i, I did now what i need is the ip address so i'll create that later on so okay so we have uh, what we have here is we have modified we have sample.txt that we have modified and then we have ping script but we have to change the name of this from ping screen to ping script so i'll i'll stage it first so i'll do git add um, so just confirm so we've already added it but now i want to I want to rename it so to rename it, I, I use git move, git mv, which is move, and then we give it a new name. So the file that we want to rename is ping or to whatever to, we want to rename it to ping, to ping script. So that one ran successfully and it has to be staged. If it is not staged, that command will not run successfully. So if we do git status, uh, you can see that we it says that uh, we deleted ping screen and we created a new file ping script and so we can we can commit that file so you can see it it, it affected whatever file that was uh, staged you can as well uh, let's say we want also to delete the file called sample.txt from the staging area but we want it to continue existing on our machine locally so how do we do that so we'll do it we use gitrm and then we, we use cached and then we give it the name so in this case we want to re remove this file from the staging area we don't want it to be part of the snapshot so we'll do gitrm sample sample.txt so when you do git status that file should should exist in our machine that means it should be shouldn't be tracked but at the same time it should have been uh, deleted from the staging area so when we do this you get to see that we deleted sample.txt but we have it existing locally but if we just did git uh, gitrm and then we, we, we say sample.txt 
what that command would have done is delete it on the staging area and also delete it locally so we are, that means you are going to lose everything so but so be very careful when you're running these commands awesome so that's what we have for now so we can um we can we, we can we can commit this so another way of of doing our commit remember when you just run git commit it gives you the it, it fires up the the editor and it forces you to enter the to append your message there now i was telling you that if just in case you want to you want to have a particular editor besides vim so the command to do that you just do git config and then you you do global core and then you enter the you, you enter the name of the editor here if it is vim you enter vim if it is uh, if it is Emax, you enter Emax, and whatever editor you you the common editor you might want to use. So very important. So you can configure that. But right now me I want to use Vim because that's what I use most of, most of times, uh, and I'm comfortable with that. So uh, another way to commit a message if if just in case you do you want to have uh, all the files you are handling at the moment that you you already stayed them and com uh, you did commit them at some point so that means those files are already being tracked and you want to cut on the hassle of running the command called git add and then git commit you don't want to do all that what you'll do you'll run this command you'll do git add and then git m for message so this a stands for add you're adding all the files and then this one for the message and then you enter your message but in this case we are not going to run it maybe we'll run it in future because we've, we've already added we did run git add so what you're going to do is you're just going to run git uh, git commit and then we enter the message so um now the challenge here is i don't know the commit message to to i don't i, do, I don't know what commit message to have here so i'll do git diff to see what changes i've, I've made maybe let's say i want to look at the files i've staged and see what changes i've made and as you can see uh what i have is i deleted the pink screen file that's why it is it, it has everything in red because that file was deleted and and git is smart enough to tell me that i deleted that file so within my message i can say i deleted this because i'm looking for something to do to add on the git commit message and then uh, I created a new file, ping script. You remember, I renamed this file, and these are the contents. So I just added a, a ping script, a for loop, to iterate the list of uh, of my IP addresses and to ping them and to tell me whether whether it was successful or not. Okay, so that is it. And then the sample.txt. You remember, we deleted it from the staging area. So at least I have an idea of what I'm going to, the message I'm going to, uh, to write. So I'll say git commit. Let me just delete everything here. So, so we're only going to do the message and I can say deleted. So we look, we're looking at git checkout and we say that it, we can use it to create uh, branches and we can also use it to revert the modifications we've made and wish to throw them away so we use git checkout and, and then we just pass the file but that command also is one of the commands that are being highly uh, discouraged from use because uh, when you use git checkout then you are bound to lose um, your changes and that means you will not be able to recover them and that's why it is highly discouraged so what happens if you really want to throw away your changes but just in case in future you happen to want to get back and have a look at those changes so one command you can use is um, git stash and what git stash does instead of throwing your changes away it creates a copy of the change the modifications you've done so far and creates some sort of dirty archive for that so in future you can still uh, using the same command git stash uh, and its option you can still uh, be able to you can still be able to acquire your 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 thrown away changes so if you just have if you do git help stash so you see 
uh, with git stash we can use list it lists every every everything that you have created a copy of and stored it so all the th all, all the git stash you did you'll be able to see that and then show it will show uh, a particular stash so if if you did three stash then if you want to view the first one so you can use the, those options and you can even drop those uh, uh, the, the stored changes or modifications or pop and apply that means you want to use those changes now you've made up your to make use of them you can create a branch and, and just have the, those changes within that branch and then git push if you want to merge those changes and so on and so forth you can go through the documentation i think it it explains that quite well awesome so that's how we throw away changes and just to show you how we create branches so this the same command we use to create branches that is git checkout and so if you have to create you want to create a branch you can you can use the option b minus p or capital b for creating a branch in most cases i like doing this so you do git checkout and then you create the you give the name of the branch so maybe i want to create a functionality for i want to test my script my ping script so i'll say test or ping test right um yes uh, this is just a name but it's let's say uh, the feature we want to test the ping script so uh, we want to use this branch for that so so you see now it creates the you also when you do git checkout b uh, minus b and then the branch name it switches to that branch so if you want to, to see how many branches we have but this is a topic for another day i'll just mention so you can now see that we have uh, three branches we have files ping uh, master and ping test and the most current branch we are at is the uh, ping test if we do git log uh, okay so so you see um the head is pointing at the ping test because that's where we are currently and then the rest of the branches um they do exist but the working branch is the is, uh, the ping and that's where the head is pointing to and so if we make any commits they uh, within this branch they'll exist within here but here we have all the commits now there's one thing we can with the commits we have we can check out from one commit to another we can view even the contents of of these commits for instance you want to view the commit of this message the, of this commit you want to view its content so how do you go about that so we can do something like uh, it appears to be this command git cut file and then we just pass in the the hash value um that one should um then okay so um hmm. I don't know why that one is not working but okay that one was so just doing it cut file and then we don't pass in the, the option that seems not to work if we do a uh, type it gives us a comment if we do uh, I don't know what other, other option I uh, know this type s is show object size e is exit and p is pretty print so we have to pass in an option so if we say p tells us that this one prints the, the contents of uh, the message and it tells us who committed the the committer is is me suppose i work in a team and then i create a merge request and then there is somebody who is looking at my code and and, and approving my my code somebody who is like a gatekeeper who checks the standard of the code and the functionality and stuff like that and then approves or disapproves so at that in that in that case i'm not going to uh, that person is also going to to get credit for having a look at my code and and approving my code so he or she will also be a committer but i'll be the author anyway so you see uh git gives you the the credit for whatever you did and through this okay so this git cut file enables you to view the contents of the file and the metadata so you use the use the hash value the hash value you don't need to use the whole of it git is so smart to know which hash value you are, you are referring to so if we do git log um, and we just pick this this time around we are not going to do cut file but we are going to do just going to do git log and then we pass in the hash value we should also be able okay so it makes it uses that hash value as the very first the very current commit and everything uh, that came before it some so the next command is git log and things are getting more interesting here 
are supposed to view the history, to look at the history and dissect it and see what we have been doing so far. So the history in brief is just a collection of the commit the commits we did and the commits are in form of hashes. If you, uh, you if you if you had a look at the git introductory bit then you understand that every hash represents a commit. So if we do git log it should be able to give us a list of so it gives us the commits we've done so far. So this is the first commit or the first this is the most current commit we, 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 we created, it's at the top. And you can see we have something very important here. We have what you call the head and master. The head tells you that this is where we are. This is the current, the head is where the, the current commit is pointing at, where we are current, currently. And the branch we are working with is master. So what happens if we change the branch, if we create a new branch and we are working on that branch, our head will not point to master but the pointer will move to the to the branch that will create but since we've not created any branch and we intend to handle the branches in another video because that is a detailed concept at the moment we'll just work with the default branch so currently this is the most current commit we created so it, it, that's where the head is and the head points to the master branch. Now when you look at our commit, our commit contains uh, metadata. So we have the author, in this case it is myself, and then the date I created the commit, and then the, the commit message. At times you might not want to see all of this. You might just want to have the hash value and maybe the message. So we, I'm going to show you how we're going to save that. Um, also you can format your commit message to appeal to you the way you want it to so there's also a way to do that and i'll be able to show you and the rest you can really go and dig deeper going forward but the most important is for you to know what the git log command does so it just gives you a history of the commits you've done and the very first commit more the, the the most current commit and that's where the head points to and when you hear of uh, somebody talking of detaching the head that means we are we just basically removing this head and attaching it maybe to this commit so we are detaching it from the current location to previous commit but by default that's where it exists but you can detach it if we have to look at this commit then we'll I'll show you how we're going to do that very okay so other options of git log we can we might want we might want to have to only look at a certain number of commits so for that and we want to look at that commit in detail. So we'll use the p value, which stands for patch. So that is git log patch. You can write p or patch, but I'll just use the short form. And then I just want one commit because we have already two. So you can see we have a display of only one commit. And because we use the option p, what we have here is a detailed commit. It has the message and everything. Every change we made has been included in this commit. So that 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 is it another option too is you can do git git log we might just want to view the stats the statistics so it'll say git log start and uh, you can see it gives us the statistics in detail of each commit like we did remove uh, seven lines we did add 18 and uh, that's in ping script then in in sample we removed one and so on and so, so you can see the the statistics here all right another thing also you might want is i remember i said you might want to view it in a pretty way format the output so you can do you can do git log um pretty we use the pretty option and we under the pretty option we just want one line so you can see gives us the hash value and it also gives us the, the commit message for each which kind of makes things compact and you don't want really if you have so many uh, so, so many commit messages to look at you don't want to look at the statistics and so on and so forth you want to really filter that and have uh, compact commits then that's one way so besides the one line you can substitute the one line maybe with something like we have other options like short can try that one out besides short we have another option which is full and fuller try that and see how things work out awesome so there's also another option with git instead of one line you can you can add format and then with format you have to maybe we want to format it in terms of uh, we want it to give us the hash values so what we do we give it a placeholder here rather uh, of h h stands for the hash value and maybe we want the commit message so we just want the string so we use s for that maybe that's just what we want for now and 
another thing is we want it, we want it to be in a graph a, a graph presentation so so that's what we have you can see it's in form of a graph and our graph points to this commit this hash value and gives us the message in form of a string which is uh, whatever it is and so if we had so many uh, branching and so on and so forth this is very important when when we when we when we have implemented one, more than one branch but at the moment we only have one branch but if we had like two to three branches then you could see literally branching from this branch to this branch where when you merge and we'll be looking at that later on so this command will, will come in handy uh, going into the future so that's it for now you can if you really want to play around with this you can get into the documentation and get to learn much more about this and just the very last thing uh, about the git log so we can also have git if we happen to have so many of the commit messages maybe we are working as a team and people are really pushing stuff you know so at that point for you to really sieve through the commits it becomes really a challenge so uh, this git log also allows you to only look at commits since using the options we have git log since we can use since and we can pass in the the date uh, the date maybe we won't say like two weeks just want to look at the commits that have been in existence within the two weeks and so since and another option which is until i think this is self-explanatory and you can also pass in the date the date or time so so um so maybe let's say uh, i want to look at commits uh, from 3 let's say 3 p.m until um i don't know if that one will work but you can try it maybe until 5 p.m because um this this is morning so it had it appears there's nothing what about if i just said uh maybe since 3 a.m so since 3 a.m I have these these are the commits i have the only two so that one works and that's awesome it happens i've been not sleeping <laughs> all right so that's all about the logs and uh, another thing maybe we might have a look at is um, how do you if we have done the commits and maybe the commit that we've just created uh, appears to have the wrong commit message and we want to change that it appears we have a way to do to, to undo that uh, commit message and the command we use is git commit and then we pass in the flag amend so this one doesn't affect the uh, it only affects the current commit the very uh, the commit to which the head is pointing to but not the, the any other commit uh, before that so if we do git git amend it, it you can see it fires up the editor and we are able to change this message but that doesn't mean that it, this uh, commit is deleted as such this commit will still exist but only that the head will point to if we really want to get it back we can get it back so we can change the message here we can say something like uh instead of saying renaming ping file we can say uh, what we did add actually is can say add um we, d we did add uh, we had a loop add a loop to the loop function and pin them this is too long okay okay so that is it so we have made the changes and uh, the message you can see add loop functionality so it, th that commit message has been changed but i told you it only applies to the most current commit so um that's how we undo the commit i talked about we already looked at unstaging file and staging uh, files that have been staged and what we used we you used to get status and it was able to so in case in case we stage we stage the file sample.txt like let's do let's stage it so um, so one option to unstage a file what we used to do is to we used to get restore 
staged uh, and then we pass in the file that's how we used to unstage the file and then to um, and then uh, there's another there appears to be another way to do that because we have staged it so we can we can reset it from the head so we can use git reset but this option is not encouraged because it does a lot of mess but just good for just good I mentioned it but you know what the head is where uh, we currently pointed that so we can do git reset head and then we pass in the file in this case file is sample.txt but what this does it offers the commit so that the commit points to the id instead of uh, pointing to a branch so it makes it an orphan which is not a good thing okay for you can have a look at it you can do a research on it there's some uh, areas where it might come in handy but in most cases you are discouraged from using that and then um you can also the another command called git checkout now suppose suppose we want to revert back all the modifications we've made we want to get back to our initial state we want to get back to uh, the initial uh, clean working tree that we had before we started making modifications it appears uh we, ca we can use git checkout so this command is used to create branches and to switch from one branch to another but it can also be used to uh, revert back all the changes we've made so uh, for this case maybe let's see to persist these changes but we want to throw them away so we can use git checkout for that we are approaching the end of this tutorial on git command on basic commands and uh, just one thing on git log before we are done i said before that i'll show you how to check out from one uh, commit to the other one. so i want this head not to point to the current commit but to the previous commit because i want to see the changes i made in the in in the previous uh, commits rather so what i'll do i want to view this commit and its uh, modifications so what i'll do is uh, i'll do git checkout and then I'll give it the hash value but this is not encouraged okay fine seems we have some changes here because we you always have to confirm that so we have changes here so what I'll do is um, I can use git checkout with an option F yeah and you see when I used git checkout with the, the option F it threw away all the changes I had. That's why I told you before that this is not one of the best options because now I can't recover those changes. But in case I used git stash, in case I used git stash, I was going to have those changes stored somewhere. So what if I, so maybe I just want to, to add something to this file. So yeah. just want to open that to this file um, and then I, I, I'll add this now you see I have uh, if I do git status there are some modifications I've made on this file so I have uh, I've actually added everything but I don't want to add everything okay that's awesome now I want to get stash because I just want to create a copy of uh, of this instead of uh, throwing away all the changes as I did like I did before. So what I'll do is I'll do get stash. Um, okay. So it saved. You can see it's, it saved the working directory into index state work in progress. WIP means work on progress on ping test, and this is the hash value if you want to access the state of. Uh, of this working directory at this particular point before before I did git stash but right now so later on if I have to do uh, git status you'll see that there's nothing staged or commit the working tree is clean and so so that was it about the git stash I think that was very clear there's one important thing I want us to look at and that is the git remote now we have made so many changes to so, um, I was to do git checkout of the logs sorry uh, so I wanted to show you how you can switch from one commit to another and simply change the uh, pointer of the head from the current uh, commit to the previous one that one is possible and what you can do is uh, did we even copy the the hash value so I want to 
want to see the contents of this hash value and to switch to check out from this current to this one so I want to check out to this this uh, hash value so what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to do git checkout and you, this co this will only run if the working tree is clean as we did with either by throwing away the changes or committing all the changes that's what makes uh, or doing git stash that's what makes the tree clean so I'll do git checkout and we are checking out this commit so that there we are we are successful so we switch so you see switching to to that hash value um, we can undo this option by using git switch dash and then this one will take us back it's like a git checkout master or going back to where we were before what, what that does often the commit so we are there so if I do git status right now we are at the detached head this is the head that we are at and uh, if we want just to view the content of this tree you can see we have ping tree ping script and there isn't much there so that's how you can you can uh, can switch back and the option is uh, git switch get out of uh, the detached head so if i do git log actually i missed something but anyway so let's do git log you can see we are back at our previous uh, commit but i can still do the same thing let me I, I i failed to show you one thing that i wish to show and that is a uh, git checkout i just want you to see where the head is pointing at so if we do git log uh, you can see we had three commits but right now we only have uh, we only have two commits and and the head actually is is at this commit but this head is not pointing anywhere that means it is detached it's not pointing to any branches i told you and for that case we say that it is orphaned so you understand the meaning of us of of, of being orphaned so a commit is orphaned when the head is not pointing to any branch it's just pointing to an id like in this case but you can get out of this but by saying it switch and then and we, are, and we are back so if we do git log you'll see now everything is back in order and the head is pointing to a branch which is in order that means not pointing to an id and therefore it is not orphaned okay cool now we have been working with the git basics and, and this repo only exists um, locally it is not linked to the remote repo for us to confirm that actually this repo is existing only locally and not remotely there's a command called git remote and when you run that command you see if it's existing locally and not remotely it won't return anything so it gives us some blank message that means it only exists locally now let's compare it to to the we cloned at the beginning of this we cloned the algorithms uh, repo from uh, from the remote um, from the remote uh, account uh, so if we s if we get into the algorithms and and we do git remote you can see it it tells us that it exists actually and the name of uh, of, of that of that remote is origin which is always the default name given to us by git but we can name it can give it a we can rename it we can do git rename um, git rename origin and we give it another name give it like a uh, seba or another but in this case i don't want to rename it so when you clone it the repository is already linked now uh, we want to learn how to, to uh, how to link it manually so we'll go to the git basics which is not linked so awesome so there it is so the first thing we have to do we have to go to our remote account and just create that folder that remote repo so new repo we can call it git basics too we can give it the same name we can leave this the rest of the things as they are we don't care anyway awesome it has been created another thing we can do with this we want to copy the awesome uh, yeah we want to use the https and what you want to copy you want just to copy this url so that url is what we'll use to to link the, the local uh, repo to the remote repo so to do that we'll do the, the the git remote has got this option called add so we'll do git remote add and then when you do add you have to give it a name like you saw we had origin as the name we can give it any name but in this case we, we want to go with the name origin which is the conventional name so we'll give it the name and then uh, we'll point it to a url because we have so many urls existing and then you have to be very specific that's why we use the url so we are going to substitute the name with the origin 
which is, is the name that exists by convention that points to the remote and then we give it the now we give it the, the real url if we do get remote to this uh, local repo it tells us that we have successfully linked it to the remote now what's the importance of this the importance of this is that we can push and pull content uh, within these two repos we can pull content from the remote to the local and we can push content from local to to the remote because we are already uh, linked now what if i want to change the name from the name origin there is a way to rename these and uh, remote rename i was missing that um origin let's give it another name like um can say sub or sb so if we do git remote we see sb instead of origin so that's how we rename uh, the remote so if you want to, to to view in detail the contents of remote we use the v option and you can see now we can push and you can see the the urls now this is very important especially if um, you are working as a team and so many people are contributing to uh, let's say to this project called git basics so very many people are adding different features and we want to view all those people who are part and parcel of this uh, project so when you use git remote v it will be able to basically give us all their names as long as they have contributed so apart from my two options for fetch and push it will also show other people who have been fetching and pushing content so this is very crucial awesome so if we have already linked our local repo to the remote repo the next thing we can do is um, we can uh, now start pulling content and to pull content to pull changes maybe some other developers have added changes to the to the repo and we have forked or we have cloned uh, that, that repo it is advised that with after some time you pull the changes you pull the changes so we can add uh, we, we can pull changes by use of git pull so when you do git pull it will pull the changes but right now there is nothing there because there's nothing we've pushed or somebody has so that is it so we can do git pull tell which which branch so we want to pull from master so we say git pull origin in this case our remote it remote actually uh, yeah so we'll say git pull instead of origin we renamed it to sb and we are pulling from master the master branch that is existing remote so when we do that uh, so it couldn't find that one because that's how we pull um, and then to push we use git push and we can say push origin origin master but since we renamed it we can say uh, i want to rename this one back because i don't like it i just like the conventional name git remote rename sb uh, to origin so git remote okay that's fine if I say git in uh, so to push changes that we've, we've made changes and wish to push them after and you only this only happens when the tree is clean so you have to do git status to confirm that so our tree is clean and we have commits as you can see when you do git log we have these commits and we want to push these commits so what we do is uh, we do git push so we'll do git push uh, origin because we're in master branch so and that one should work fine and i told you before that uh, one disadvantage of uh, using https as uh, https as the transfer protocol instead of ssh is every other time you'll be asked for the username and the password but when you use ssh then there is the use of the public key so you don't have to enter your username and password every other time you have to do a git pull or git push uh, so that's so it's a security security feature that uh, is important and there has to be a very a way to verify that you're the actual person who is uh, pushing or pulling content from you just to protect your stuff remotely and locally okay so in this case i'll enter my and i'll enter my my password too and then that's how we push stuff uh okay so th there's another option instead of when you do git pull 
it 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 does it does fetch all the changes that uh, have been made in case somebody was contributing to the same repository it will pull all those changes and it will merge them automatically to our local uh, branch that we are working with uh, or repo alternatively you can do git fetch and when you do git fetch what it does it will uh, it will pull the changes yes but it won't merge the changes automatically so you will have later on to do git merge again to merge those changes so that's how you pull and push changes um, to to the remote branches that's how you link and then lastly the very last thing we, we talk about tags this is something that uh, most people don't use but it turns out that it is very important especially if you want to to version your your, your development into some sort of uh, versions so that you, you you can tag um you can tag you can tag your versions so you can do checkouts and each checkout is like a a, a version on its own so uh say after you have worked on a particular feature you want it to be you you want that state of your project to be a version on its own and then when you start develop you, then you you check out into a new uh, into a new branch and then that one becomes like a new version again or you check out into a new tag and then that so you break your your project development life cycle into versions and to do that what you have to make good use of are the tags so i won't really go into details here but if you want to create tag a tag you use the git tag and uh, so if we do git tag and if we if we had any tags existing then it was supposed to list them but since we don't have any we, do, we have a blank page um now let's say I want to, um, you want to list a particular tag, you'll, you'll do git tag uh, and then you use the L flag to, and then you give it the, you have to give it the, the real, um, you have to give it the real uh, version. So let's say that version was version 1.4545, you know, you, you have also, um, so it, it will list the contents of, or the meta, the metadata of, uh, of of that um, that tag. In this case, that tag never existed, and so um, and so uh, we have nothing. Now there are two types of tags. There is what we call um, the lightweight tags and uh, annotated. We call them annotated tags. The lightweight tags are like uh, they just like point us to a commit. Yeah, but most cases we work with the annotated tags. That those are the tags we'll be creating most most at, most of the time. So um, how do you create like an an annotated tag? So you what we do is let's say we are creating a tag here. So we'll do git uh, git tag. This is the command we'll use, and then we pass in an option A. That's an uh, annotated tag, and then you can give it like version one. Like if it's the very first one, like let's say like version zero point zero point one being the very first one and then every tag we have to give it a message of course like i said the first version okay so we've created the tag so if we do git tag let's see if you can see we have this tag existing version 0 0.0 and that's how easy it is and then if we want to list uh, let's say we want to list let's say we want to list the we, we had that option up here um, hmm. uh, so what I'm going to do is just to delete this and pass in an option here. We are not creating this, but we want to list the version. So it, that, that's what it lists. Another option to just show you the contents of, uh, we can use git show actually to show us the contents of the tag. So git show and the tag goes version 0 0.0 0.1. So you can see. This way it shows us uh, everything that existed within this tag. So the tag is here, and the the person who did the tag, which is the tag, it's myself, and the date, this is the date, and the message of the tag is here. And you can see it gives us plus other commits. So, so that's how we create the, the annotated tags. Remember, you have to append to give it a flag of A. What about the lightweight tags with that? we rarely work with that create that you just do um you can say let let this one so tag and then you can say let this one be, be version 0 0.0.2 like i renamed it badly okay okay so this one you don't pass in the option a it just remains that way so 
and this one actually becomes so that's a lightweight tag so if i do git tag it's supposed to show me those two so this is the the one we just created and this was the first one awesome so so we don't supply the m for the message here the a or anything that's why we call it a, we called it a, a lightweight so there's no message there is no a there so on and so forth now there's one thing i have to let you know that is uh, the very fact that when you do git uh, when you commit your 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 work and push your work git git doesn't push doesn't transfer the the tags with your with your the rest of your content but the, you have to force git to to, uh, to push so by default it doesn't push but if you want uh, git to push to push your your tags together with the other work you you are doing then you use git push origin and then you append tags like this then you you do that that way it will push your change your your tags as part of the rest of the content if you don't do that the versioning you you, you are versioning by use of the tags will only be effective locally and anybody will be pulling your changes won't be able to notice that you did any versioning by use of the tags in short those tags won't work to the person who will pull your changes now, so locally in your machine you can instead of uh, you, the way you, we were checking out from so you saw when we did git show and then we passed in the so let's do git so we have the version uh, this so i can copy this one and so if we do git show we pass in this you can see we have um we have this tag here and we have these other tags here yeah so we can we can check out now the way you just check out from one branch to the other um you can use the same same way to check out from one tag to the other so like in this case we have tag version this one so we can check out we can do git checkout okay in tag i think the tag and that one works switching to version 0 0.001 so you see though you just switch with branches you can also switch with the tags so very important so you at some point you'll see people using these and using the tags to switch from from one version to the other and this one can come in it can be very important going to the feed but these tags you can also delete them if you want to delete a tag so we had these tags uh, what was our tag version 0.01 so if i want to delete this tag what i'll do is i'll do git delete actually not delete but i'll do git tag then i pass in the d flag for delete and then i just enter in the the the, the tag itself uh, and that is the tag and that way it is being deleted so if i come to confirm uh, i say git uh, tag okay so it doesn't exist we already deleted it now if it happens that we pushed this tag uh, to the remote repo if you just do git delete the way we have deleted that will only delete delete uh, this uh, tag locally but it won't delete it remotely so there's an option to delete it remotely and that option is um, you have to do something like uh, it's tricky you might not understand it but do git push and then origin because that's the default name of the remote so uh, and then we pass in the refs tags and uh, within the refs folder we have tags we'll be looking at those folders in advanced stage and then we pass in the tag itself so it was version 0.0.1 but now that we never pushed it to the remote so it, it's of no use here so we leave that as it is so um now instead of using this command it was git git push origin and then the refs and so on we can also use git push origin and then we just do uh, which seems to be the simplest um, then we pass in the delete option and then we give the tag name here and we are done so that's it guys so um that is it and uh i want to say that this is the end of it all we, we let's prepare ourselves for advanced uh, use of git there's another thing on git aliases And what this simply does is um, it enables you to shorten these commands you know you configure these commands and maybe you can look at that so instead of writing git checkout like git checkout you can it enables you to shorten these commands to something like git ch 
you know so if if so that in the future you don't have a lot to type so if you just do git ch uh, your git knows that what you're doing is you're running git checkout commands so if you you have there so to configure that what you have to do is you have to go to your git config file of course and we said that exists within your git config file so uh, you have to go to the git config file and remember when you're configuring the the editor it was global and then but right now here the option is, is instead of uh, editor the option is the alias so if we have to change the alias for checkout so we'll say our checkout will be dot ch so that is for the checkout so our checkout we will never be a uh, checkout again but it will it will it will use the ch or if it was uh, if we wanted to change git status maybe what we'd do is uh, say uh, we'd call git config and then we pass in the same option so what we want to create an alias called uh, st for status so we have to pass in the right uh, command here which is status this is the command we are changing to st so in future what we'll be doing is we'll just be doing git st instead of git status that's how we do git alias very that's very important so thank you so much for following through if you've if you've been uh with me from the beginning to the end i understand it's been a long video because at some point i had really to explain some things in detail i say thumbs up and um, let's um the, so the following video will be quite advanced but that one but that one uh, is for those ones who wish really to get to know the, the deeper details with this you should be able to use git comfortably and do everything um, but you want to really become an expert then I think the following video is not uh, you're not going to miss that one thank you so much and stay safe